I was at uh, headquarters uh, a couple of weeks ago and I bumped into uh, old acquaintance of mine. Now, most of you probably haven't had the pleasure of working with Ryan Malley, but uh, Ryan was one of uh, our first engineers on the ground. And not only he helped this product grow, uh, but also taught me and a lot of the other people that came after him. So um, Ryan, if you're watching this, thank you very much for all your support and knowledge sharing. As I was there, I uh, asked him what new projects and POCs he's working on. He actually told me about an elevator model he built on top of our access control. So I thought that um, I'll shoot a small video with him explaining this and then give you a more detailed overview. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, how do I actually control a elevator from an AC42 or a 62? And the answer is it, it depends. If you just want a simple operation, as in somebody badges in, then the elevator is cold and then they can make their way through whatever floor they choose, you can purely provision a door. Because from our point of view, somebody presents their credentials to a reader, we read them, they match the access level, and then the door is functioning. But the whole idea behind this video and Ryan's POC was to understand how we can give access only two specific flaws. And this is when a new piece of equipment comes in play, which is called the AX11 IO controller. This box, which is very, very similar to the AC42 in size, will allow you to have multiple input and outputs and create your own logic on top of that. I'm gonna go back to what else can the AX11 do, but for now, let me show you what Ryan had to say about his elevator mock-up. Well, I'm uh, here at Bercada HQ in uh, downtown San Mateo. Uh, and I stopped in our uh, lab where uh, most of our engineers come, spend some time, play around with probably all the devices that Bercada has ever made. And I bumped into a local legend. Uh, that's Mr. Oh. Mr. Mr. Ryan Malley. So Ryan joined Bercada quite a while back. About four and a half years ago, yeah. Yeah, so which makes you uh, one of the long-standing I've, I've been employees? here. I've been here for a little while. That's that's accurate. Nice, nice. So you know, some of you might might see some videos on YouTube uh, from Ryan. So definitely, yeah, if you, hunt, if you hunt around deep enough. Yes, I'm definitely my inspiration. Oh. Um, obviously, I still need to wear a suit and tie, but um, yeah, those are. I, I think I think you're in good company as far as not wearing a tie around here goes. Nice, nice. I mean, um, Ryan's been kind enough to uh, show me around uh, some of the lab work he's been helping build. Um, we didn't really do a video so far on the AX11. Of course. It's an IO controller. Um, I do do a lot of videos when it comes to access control, purely focused on AC41, 42, 62. Um, can you kind of give a brief overview on the AX11? When does that kind of fit in just I, before we start? I'd love to, yeah. The, the AX11 is kind of a niche device. Um, if you look at our door controllers, obviously those are the shining stars that were actually going to be doing things like controlling locks, taking rear inputs and that sort of thing. But a lot of times you have these kind of auxiliary applications. Um, common ones might be panic buttons, outputs for lockdowns, for strobes and sirens and that sort of thing. Um, but one thing that this does in particular that none of our other devices can is operate as an elevator controller. So you and if your building has some kind of elevator, you have a box. Um, and we'll get to what uh, what this guy is going to be doing in a second. That box somewhere in your elevator control room is going to actually be taking all the button inputs, it's going to have the remote outputs, and it's going to be taking in requests and then basically telling the elevator when to move up or down. So if you've gotten into an elevator before and you've used a badge reader on it, that badge reader is going to go back to a device a lot like this, and it's going to basically tell the controller whether or not you can press that button at all. So 12 story high rise, you may, might have a company on each floor. You can use a device like this to control who has access to what floor at any given time, just like you would for a door. Okay. And I guess if the customer just wants to be able to access the elevator and that's it, and then onwards you can press all the buttons, I guess we can go for like an AC for 100%. So the, yeah, one of the ways that we talk about this is that if you have an, a reader on the outside of your elevator, a reader just to uh, call the elevator cab. That's totally fine. We just treat that like a door. If anything, you just badge in and we tell the controller to call the elevator down, just like we would tell a door to unlock. Can you run the people on? Oh yeah, about what this tangle of wires yeah, yeah. looks like. So 
an elevator an, an elevator controller is a remarkably difficult thing to get your hands on, especially when you don't have an elevator handy. Um, so rather than go through um, the process to actually procure an elevator controller for an elevator that doesn't exist, um, I just went ahead and made a simulator for one. Um, this entire setup is basically meant to simulate what an elevator um, interacts with an AX11. In fact, my goal for this for this whole build, which we'll talk about in a second, was to build an elevator simulator agnostic to an AX11 to best show what that integration might look like. So despite the fact that there are a lot of wires, it's actually pretty straightforward. This is meant to represent the elevator cab itself. It has the call buttons, one through six, that might be hard to read over here. And then this guy is just a Raspberry Pi running a script that's simulating the elevator. It keeps track of where the cab is, keeps track of whether it's moving up or down, and the buttons that you um, call to get it there. So the idea, I can find my access cards here. Let's say I've got one, I've got this labeled here uh, for our first, second, and third floors. Right now, the elevator is on our sixth floor. That badge read went through, so I should be able to call this to one, two, and three. But if I hit four, five, or six, nothing's happening. That's because, and if we wanted to get a video of this, I'm going to badge this in one more time. These three outputs here are the actual wires that are going to let the buttons be pressed. So to talk about what an elevator control board even looks like, all the AX11 here is doing is taking the wires from the buttons and interrupting them as they come back to the controller. When the buttons are closed and you see these blue buttons lit, that just means the circuit is closed so that the elevator sees a button being pushed in the first place. Right, so the nice thing that the sort of elegant part of the solution is that it's completely agnostic to the elevator controller. It doesn't matter what model you're using, what brand, anything like that. All this does is just stop the button press signal from ever getting to your elevator controller unless you've badged it correctly. Nice. And I guess from a Barcada perspective, you get an AX11. Um, do you need a license for that? Like, how's that kind of Oh, work? yeah. It's just one device, one license. Um, one of the things I actually really like about the AX11 in particular is that this doesn't need to be in an elevator mode. All of the outputs, which are these two rows here, and all the inputs are independent. You could have a panic button input on this one here, going to a lockdown output over here, event bridge modes throughout, and you could just have these operating as their own individual elevator outputs. It's totally up to you, and you're not locked into any particular mode once you've got this going. Okay, hopefully that was clear and gives you this idea that if you want to allow users only on certain floors, this is where you can bring the AX11 and then for each different floor you have a circuit and when people badge in, only those relays will be activated, thus only those buttons will be able to be pressed. So that's the AX11 in a nutshell. Uh, we'll be building more and more functionality on top of it, and I'll make sure I'll keep you updated. Uh, one last thing to note is that as opposed to an AC unit, we don't license per door, so we don't really wire a door in here. Uh, we just license for the box itself. Remember, as with anything, the Verkada license does give you 10-year warranty and full access 24-7 to our support team. If you have any questions, either about AX11 or access control in general, do drop me a comment and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. And if you want to watch a more in-depth webinar, I'm just going to drop a link below.